Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and in this video I will show you how to set up a home studio that will allow you to easily see, hear, and control everything in your class when teaching online with Zoom. Yes, I'm filming this in sweatpants because, let's be honest, it's 10 months into the pandemic, I haven't worn real pants in almost a year, and if you're teaching from home, you're probably in sweatpants too. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know they are mostly about using the Zoom software. Most of them are screen recordings on the computer showing you what to click on and how to do things. I haven't really talked much about the hardware setup yet, so I thought people would find that useful. This is more of a deluxe setup that does involve multiple, multiple computers, so don't panic if you don't have multiple computers at home. You can certainly teach from Zoom using just one. This is more if you would like to set up a studio that is similar to what many universities may have set up for faculty to teach from a conference room on campus with multiple monitors so you can see and control things a little more easily. But again, don't panic if you don't have multiple machines. You don't need this setup. This is more the Cadillac version. So let's go through the hardware one at a time and see what I have set up here. The first is essential if you want to do handwritten notes. You are going to need a tablet or one of these two-in-one laptops like I have here that folds over to regular laptop mode, but can also fold back to be used as a tablet. With that, you're going to need a stylus to do your handwritten notes. Now, the software that you're running on this tablet to do those notes is kind of a separate issue. You can use Zoom's built-in whiteboard feature. You can use PowerPoint. If you're on an iPad, there are apps like Notability that are popular. So I'm not gonna go into those different software options in this video. I do have an entire separate video about how to draw from within Zoom, but this device is really just for your notes. So you are logged into Zoom on here. You can do your handwritten notes. I have just the Zoom whiteboard feature here but it is kind of a pain to simultaneously control or manage a Zoom meeting from this device. So I'm screen sharing the full screen whiteboard, and if I want to go to the chat or the participants list or access the other meeting controls, then I have to stop drawing first, and now, you know, I don't have my mouse or keyboard out, so I'm kind of trying to use the Zoom in touchscreen mode, which is really not great um, on a PC like this. It's a little better on an iPad, but you really don't want to have to try and manage the meeting from this device. That is where your primary or control computer is going to come in, so let's talk about that next. So your main computer is where you're actually going to have a traditional keyboard and mouse hooked up, and this is where you're really going to manage the meeting. So if you do need to access the chat, the participants list, any of those other controls in the Zoom meeting, then you can just use a regular mouse to do that, and you're not trying to fiddle with a touch screen where you're doing your writing. Now, you do not need two monitors on this machine. This does make it nice because you can see your class in gallery view on one of them and the shared content from your other tablet or laptop on the other monitor. So sometimes it's a little confusing when you're sharing your screen to know exactly what other people are seeing. This lets you confirm that. So again, you have your class in gallery view over here. You can see all of your students. You can monitor the chat, the participants list, any of the other meeting controls. For example, if you're doing breakout rooms or polls, you use this computer to control that. And this extra monitor also lets you just do a double sanity check to confirm that what you are sharing from your tablet or laptop is what other people in the class are seeing. Now, this computer is also where you're probably going to have your microphone and webcam connected. This, for example, I have a USB webcam mounted on the top of my monitor here is going to allow me to actually look my students in the eye and generally give them a forward view of my face. That means it is important for your tablet to make sure you have this camera turned off. If you leave this camera on, well, for example, you have this sitting down on a table and you're writing on it, then your students are either going to get a view of your ceiling or even worse, kind of looking up your nose, depending on how you're holding this while you're writing. So you don't want people kind of looking at your, your chin or your neck or up your nose. Make sure you turn the camera on the tablet off, and then when you're talking, look at the webcam that's at your main computer. I'm going to talk very briefly about lighting and sound, although there are entire YouTube channels out there about this from people who know a lot more about it than I do. But very briefly, just for a basic setup, you can see I have my monitors facing a window here. So during the day, I have natural lighting on my face. I don't really need much artificial lighting. But if you're teaching at night or recording lectures at night after the kids are in bed, as is my case, then having a little artificial light aimed at your face can help. I have one of these little LED ring lights that clamps onto the back of my monitor stand. So if I need more illumination on my face from the perspective of the webcam, I can turn that on just with a click of a button. I don't really need it during the day. 
Now, as for sound, if you have a relatively new USB webcam, odds are that the microphone on that is sufficient for your needs if you're in a good enough room. So this is hard with everybody working from home during the pandemic, but if you can actually be in a room with the door closed on your own, then that'll be okay. You know, if there are dogs barking and kids screaming in the background, hopefully people kind of understand that that may just be unavoidable in some scenarios, but you want to try to be in your own room and ideally in a room with some soft surfaces and furniture and things kind of break up echoes and reflections from the sound. Again, there are, there are entire YouTube channels out there about how to set up a home recording studio, but you're not really doing a professional quality voiceover or music recording. You just want to make sure your students can hear you. So decent USB webcam, probably going to be built better than the built-in microphone on your laptop, for example. If you need to hang up some curtains or throw some blankets or pillows in a room to kind of soften the sound and dampen the reflections, that is probably good enough. But some people do invest in a nicer microphone, for example, like this Blue Yeti. This is a really popular one. Um, runs about $100 for a lot of people who record YouTube videos and lectures and things. If you have a microphone like this, you need to be careful with the settings. So this actually comes with some directionality settings, unlike your basic USB webcam mic. So there, if you move around a lot when you teach, as opposed, or if you're drawing and kind of moving around or gesturing with your hands, then you need to be careful with, careful with this that you don't have it on one of the very directional settings that is designed for somebody who's just kind of sitting still and recording, because then if you start moving your head side to side, the volume of your voice is going to fluctuate a lot and it's going to sound weird for the students who are listening to you. So if you have a nicer mic, again, I'm not an audio expert or microphone expert, but just double check the settings if you plan on moving around. Make sure you have it on one of the more omnidirectional settings that's going to catch you as you walk around and not something that expects you to be stationary in front of the mic. Now, you can also see I have a third computer in here. This is kind of overkill if you have two monitors on your main computer, but it is a nice sanity check to see what the meeting looks like for a regular participant. So I have either host or co-host privileges on the main computer and the tablet that allows you to do things like boot people from the meeting or change who can share their screen and that sort of thing. If you have an extra computer around, it's nice to just log into the meeting as a regular participant. This can, again, really help you confirm what the meeting looks like for your students. So if you are concerned that you're sharing and they can't see what you're doing or you're telling them to do breakout rooms or polls or screen sharing or whatever it is, and they're saying, hey, it, it's not letting me do that, I don't have permission. Having a computer of your own that is only logged in as a regular participant and not a host kind of lets you see things from the student perspective. So if you're helping them troubleshoot, seeing what things look like from their end, then this extra computer can help you do that. Again, not totally necessary if all you want to do is confirm the shared screen content. You can do that with a second monitor on your main computer, but if you don't have that second monitor and you would still like to see everybody in gallery view, so you kind of have, say, if this computer was only a single monitor and I only had my students in gallery view because that's what I wanted to see and I was just looking at my shared content here, then this third computer is a good option to confirm what the shared screen content looks like and what everybody else is seeing. So finally, assuming you do have multiple computers hooked up, you're going to want to make sure you mute the speakers and microphone on all but one of them, and here's why. You will probably find out the hard way very quickly if you are not muted because you're going to get crazy feedback from having multiple machines in the same room with their mics and speakers on. So again, in my case, I have my primary microphone hooked up to the main computer. I also have my good speakers attached to that one. So on both laptops, I make sure I mute their speakers and mute the microphone from within Zoom to avoid that feedback. So there you have it. Again, this is certainly not saying that you need to run out and buy hundreds or thousands of dollars of hardware to teach effectively at home with Zoom. You can absolutely do this with a laptop if you have to, but if you really want to be able to kind of see and control all of these things at once, this is how you can set up multiple computers and multiple screens in an orderly fashion to allow you to do it. So if you have questions or suggestions or maybe a link to a picture or even a video of your own home teaching setup, I'm sure other people watching this would be interested in seeing it. So please go ahead and leave a link in the comments. Thank you.